Hello and welcome to The Scumbag, episode 8. I'm Ed Citron and we're actually joined by Felix Biedemann as ever. Hello everybody. And But we have a special guest, Mike Fossey, I believe is the way to say it. I never actually yep, learn. that's right, it's Mike Fossey. I never learn how to Fossey. say things, ever. That's part of The Scumbag way. No research, no planning. That's, that's our shit, extremely our shit. That's good, I mean that's how I do it too. Excellent. You know what uh, the Joker always said? He said that uh, plans are, uh, or no, he didn't say, he didn't start out the sentence that way, but when I remember it, I do, but he actually said, uh, life is what happens in between plans. What the f- it, not only, and that's funny as well, because this episode is about plagiarism, and that feels like a line fairly strongly plagiarized from The Wire. Like that feels almost identical to the line. It's like something, something along the lines of things Lester saying, uh, "Life's what happened." It, it, he says something almost identical to that. Fucking hell! The Suicide Squad sounds brilliant. I um, well, he doesn't say that in Suicide Squad. Oh, he doesn't. They, they did. You are right. They did say that in The Wire. The character Omar says it, and he also says, uh, "Why do you try to fit in when you were born to stand out?" So it's, like, really just a quotable show. Yeah, The Wire was a good show, unlike, well, many shows, but also the movie The Suicide Squad. And I won't call it Suicide Squad, but that's not what the podcast's about. I apologize. I'm just so excited. I, I thought it was about The Suicide Squad. I, can I back out at this point? No, I'm afraid not. You are bound by contract. You, you signed a contract. Yeah. I feel like I was kind of tricked. Cause You're like going to honor I was looking it. forward to sort of talking about, like, The Suicide Squad. Yeah, it's, it's a real twisted podcast in that way. But no, it's... It it really we came up with this idea discussing when Jay, my my favorite EDM musician Jason Conception from The Ringer basically ripped off Felix's Suicide Squad article, and Felix did this amazing in a review of this film, and he was talking about it, and he basically said it's a movie about divorce and family. Obviously, Felix, you can talk to that, but Felix, what exactly did Jason steal from you? Please. Elaborate. I, don't know, I mean, it's like possible he didn't steal it. Uh, it reads like it. <laughs> it does kind of read is the like exact joke that I did, but uh, <laughs> like, uh, so so my review of the Suicide Squad was that it was a movie about divorce. It's about family court because those are the strongest themes in the movie. And I said that the Joker he represents when men get divorced, but instead of being broken by family court, they become cool. Like they become pickup artists and they buy fucking sick blazers and, uh, like become all confident and shit. Like the Joker is doing P like dope ass PUA stuff in the movie. He is as cool as one of those guys. Whereas Will Smith represents the disgusted dad, uh, who has been broken by family court. And this is just what I thought the movie was about. This is what I said in my review for Deadspin. But uh, Jason Concept, uh, you know, did use, like, a bunch of the exact jokes that I made throughout the article. But I don't know. It's possible that he could have just had the same idea. I don't, I don't really give a shit because... Uh, I don't know. My thing came out first. Uh, and people actually read people Dead read Spin it, even though like it came out on a Friday. I would say that, yeah. And, uh, I, you know, I already got paid for it. So it's not like I made the joke on Twitter or I, like, I did a tweet storm, which I'm known to do. I've been known to do a tweet essay. It's kind of my thing. It's kind of why people follow me is for the tweet storms. If I had done this, instead of doing the article, I'd done a tweet storm and I hadn't been paid for it. Yes, I would be sending death threats to uh, Jason Concept, but like I already got paid for it. I'm frankly laughing at him on my way to the bank to take out the money that was direct deposited into my account for the article so I can take a picture of it. And I think Jason Decepticon, though, it's really obvious that he stole it. And you know why? Because his usual pros, as many episodes ago, we took the piss out of his fucking putrid thing about bandwagons and the Warriors or whatever. It, it, my brain has blocked it out like a traumatic event. The way he wrote this, he's like, let me get this straight. Deadshot, Will Smith, has probably killed like hundreds of people in exchange for cash, but he's somehow entitled to visitation rights with his daughter. All right, this isn't how he writes. 
This is so obviously that he fucking had read your article a few times, probably chuckled while wanking, and he, as a Decepticon is want to do, just went, fuck it, I'm going to just steal this shit. But it's such a fucking tiny thing. to It's a lame thing to steal, which I think is really what is so weird about it. And what is so weird about a lot of internet plagiarism, it's not like stealing academic papers or people's hard-earned money being spent on people like, I don't know, Benny Johnson stealing thousands of pieces of shit, whatever. It's these really tiny, meaningless little chunks from things that have already run. So they're like, is it to feel popular? I don't really know. And Mike, you've had shit stolen on Twitter. It's a bit of a weird, like, uh kind of phenomenon I guess like it's I I would liken it to kind of somebody like just taking a joke that you just told her like a short anecdote even not even a joke you know like if you told an anecdote about your life and they walked over to another group of people in the same room and told the same thing to them it's like that they're just looking for like some sort of like a validation but it's I, I don't understand where that validation comes from if it's not something that you're actually you know saying in your own words well there is like a I think I want to say I don't even like I don't even know if like my thing got stolen. It's possible. It's also possible it didn't. I don't want to like accuse the guy without like knowing. It, maybe he didn't even read my thing. But I think like generally, the idea of joke plagiarism is it's a darkly comedic subject to me because oh my yeah like Mike just said like there's a lot of self hate involved there. Like you to hear yourself telling the other person's joke. Like what is going through that person's head? As they're picking up the adulation and validation of everybody saying this thing that they know that isn't theirs. Yeah, it's like, I don't get how that's satisfying. I enjoy hearing people laugh at my jokes because it makes me feel good that I came up with something funny. But if I didn't come up with it, it's that's not there. Well, didn't you have some stuff stolen? I don't, I don't know specific. I, I just vaguely in the recesses of my brain, I know something was nicked from you. Um, I'm... I'm Sure, it's happened all the time. Like, I've had people link me to, like, sort of vague rephrasings of my jokes and things like that, and it's... I don't know. I I just ignore it for the most part. I figure, like, I've gone around in real life telling jokes that I didn't come up with all the time. I would say it's sort of the same thing as that. And what's weird about it, though, I think it's... If you want... Being in an industry of people who are, like, subhuman creatures, I mean, straight up monsters of humanity, there's one thing I know is that you can do something truly worthless, but if it makes you feel important, you care. So these people who are basically stealing the same jokes or repeatedly stealing, and I've copy-pasted the funny gif occasionally, be like, eh, that's funny. That's one thing, but when you've got people... The example that came up with what talking to Felix was... The fucking Olympic, the, the it was like the Olympic lifeguard one. It was like, if you think you're having a bad day, well, imagine being a lifeguard at the Olympics. And there was a picture of this poor woman who's sitting there looking bored because, yeah, you're probably not going to have to jump in and save Michael Phelps. But then the first person who posted it was just some random fucking dude. And the next person up got like 20,000 retweets and then every person up got like 100 to 500 retweets and then every one of those fucking Tina TBH or the one with the pink background and the dolphin did it and it's just like what's your fucking po- what's the point and there were some verified accounts as well there were pe- like people pe- I, I can't remember specifically it was some sort of journalist who did it and it's just lame if I found out I stole something, which has happened accidentally in the past with an image where I thought I was the first one to take that picture or something, I don't know. I, I felt embarrassed, but these people must get some, like, jackoffery from it where they're like, yeah, people like me for my original content. Well, I think with, like, the accounts where it's, like, TBH, Dina, or, like, real Greek Stewie quotes... Like, they actually are making money off of it, because if you look at the accounts, like, every fifth tweet is, like, uh, it, it's some sponsored content bullshit to, like, a clickbait website or, like, uh, uh, pills that, that give your wife more ovaries. <laughs> I'm not really sure. But uh, you do see, like, verified media people rip off joke formats a lot, which is kind of fucking craven. But it goes to this thing that I've been thinking about that Matt said on Chapo how uh, the Twitter has kind of become like an extension of the workplace for a lot of media people. 
And so it would be the same thing of them hearing a joke and going to the water cooler and being like, Obama said if you like your Olympics, you can keep it, or some, some shit like that. Uh, but I think it's, it's, more, it's more pathetic than that because they're trying to win the adulation of crowds with something they know they didn't do. Uh, while also nominally their jobs are to be purveyors and creators and curators of content and they're just kind of taking things unattributed but that said I don't I actually don't think it's a big deal like I don't think it's a big moral panic I think it's like silly and gross when people do it but I cannot muster the moral outrage I've had a lot of my jokes stolen but I just I my, my jokes on Twitter it burns my ass a little bit to see somebody take something that I wrote and make money off it. But at the same time, like, I don't fucking know how to do that. Good, good fucking work. If I could make money off this shit, I would. <laughs> I don't know what they're doing, but more power to them. I think it's it's different when you, like, I mean, your jokes are, like, actual, like, concepts and, and scenarios and wordplay that you've come up with. What I think about more where I think, okay, like, who gives a shit is when... Okay, you remember the fat Jewish. Yeah. That's like the go-to plagiarism thing, right? Everything the fat Jew stole was like it would be a picture of SpongeBob caption, like when you smoke too much weed. Yeah, exactly. It's like that's just not that tough to come up with. I don't know. Yeah, that's really like anyone could have done that. Yeah, I mean, I often do smoke a lot of weed, and I am SpongeBob. So it's like that's <laughs> yeah. me right there when I see that. I am. I'm that guy. Whom amongst us hasn't felt that way? <laughs> but uh, no. Uh, when I saw that, that was like the biggest moral outrage. And I remember reading this article where this uh, this person who presumably like got a picture of a dog smiling, captioned like "When you're horny" or something, <laughs> stolen by the fat Jew, uh, said, "I didn't know what to do. I froze." I felt violated. <laughs> and I was like, Jesus Christ. Like, they were, the premise of the article was that they were interviewing people who had their work stolen. <laughs> their work, why the fuck am I even saying their work? Had their screenshots of TV shows with relatable captions reappropriated. The dog, who's like, he looks like he's horny. <laughs> and, the, and I too was horny, and I made a point. <laughs> and you, yeah, sir, have yeah. taken it. <laughs> Yeah, I spoke for millions of horny people that day, uh, and they were they were talking like somebody stole their identity, and I, you know, I feel look, I think like the the like a uh, first world problem thing is kind of fucking ridiculous, but this just this struck me as like a very bullshit problem that got a lot of play because people love plagiarism stories, but and. The media class does consider plagiarism to be the cardinal sin in any uh, perviation of media, which I don't even necessarily agree with. I don't think that's right. I think that's sort of a, it's like a lie of omission to say plagiarism is the worst thing you can do as a purveyor of media. I think the thing that makes the fat Jew and fuck Jerry so fucking horrifying. Well, actually, put fuck Jerry aside. We've talked about him before. And just, I've never I heard of that dude, actually. He's just, he's just, it's just a bunch of terrible stolen shit. But he's yeah, not I mean, quite as that. out there as the fat Jew. The fat Jew gets, like, fucking sponsorship deals. And then you hear him talk about himself like he's fucking Leonardo da Vinci. Like, he's fucking like, ah, yeah, I've created something here. He's like, no, you haven't. You are, fa- you are, you are. And, and actually, what's funnier is watching Business Insider, a business built on... Which does some good shit now, but was originally built on a shit ton of aggregation, saying that the fat Jew is bad for basically aggregating jokes. Just think that's funny. But this dude has made fuck tons of money off of just stealing shit. And that is something that I think has some weight behind it. If he did make, like, fucking, like, I don't fucking know... Like, a thousand dollars. I'd be like, oh, whatever, who cares? But no, he's made, like, a quote-unquote fucking brand out of it. He's probably made a million dollars or more, I guess. Oh, yeah, probably. Which is horrifying. Probably. Wouldn't be surprised. Okay, but, like, on the other side, what does... How many BuzzFeed articles have you seen where it's, like, the 28 best reactions to Michael Phelps getting an adult circumcision? <laughs> or fucking whatever. Yeah, I, I've been in, like, a dozen of those fucking things. Like, They are, like, they're attributing the tweets to people, but... 
BuzzFeed as a company makes tens of millions of dollars a year. And they also kind of fuck their, a lot of their workers. And, like, that's – I don't think that's good. Oh, yeah. Like, I I, I, I mean, this is the b- – Content aggregation without paying the people who tweet or whatever, it's like a sustainable business model for many established websites. And the fat Jew's crime is just that he, like, cut off people's names when he, like, put some dumb shit on Instagram. I don't really see the... I don't really see too much of a moral difference. He's got a talent for self-promotion, and he fucking... Yeah. He takes this shit, and he sells it, and he makes money off it. And, like, I can sit in my room and think about shit and post jokes all day, but I couldn't make a cent off it if I fucking tried. Like, I don't I, know what he's doing with it, but, like, I'm not doing that. I don't even know how I've made money off of it, to tell you the I truth. I don't know how to make money at my job. Like, I, I run a business, still haven't quite worked out where the money comes from, but great. Should work out, I hope. I make more than I've ever made in my life, but just, like, on virtue of I only worked, like, really shitty jobs before. And, like, I don't even know how. Like, if somebody asked me, like, how do you monetize, like, jokes online, I would just tell them that you have to be, like, really lucky. Uh, be a fucking sociopath and write everything yeah, in the form well, of a script. Be a sociopath or be really lucky. And for me, it's a little bit of column A, a little bit of column B. <laughs> yeah. But I, I do think that it really does come down to you have to. There, you know, let's respect these people, the five star joke men who sit there every day. They just go out there, they put on the uniform, they get on the field, and they sit there for eight unloved, wank filled hours typing out script format jokes like I'm in the Navy in space for this tweet. And they do that shit for hours on end. I'm getting my foreskin reattached for this tweet. <laughs> but that's the thing. and that, But that actually... For this tweet, I'm a dog's balls. Like, oh, fuck, I just got cut off of a dog. Shit. <laughs> <laughs> what? Mike, you don't like those? I think they're good. That actually was good, though. That's <laughs> silly. <laughs> it's, it's fun. You're like, oh, man, the dog's balls wouldn't say that. Well, what if they did? But this episode's taken me on an interesting kind of moral journey, like like an opus, because now I, I actually think that the BuzzFeed tweet things that the Grace Spellmans of the world post, and she seems like a nice enough person, not hating on her, just the, the articles, and it's not only her that does it at BuzzFeed, but you know what? It's like the people who find a funny joke or a good point and they quote it, and they go, like, this, or lol. And it's the same thing, and the BuzzFeed part is actually that much more evil. Because not only do they, not only just are they creating the borderline terrorist act of spreading these really fucking terrible jokes, but they're making money off of them. They're making, like... S- I don't think it's evil. I don't think Buzzfeed it's evil. I don't, I don't think so. Like, and I don't... I don't begrudge anyone how they make money on the internet. And yeah, it's true. I think, I mean, I've seen like, you know, okay, Grace Spellman is a good example. She like asks people like, hey, send me like tweets for like, you know, this article. And she also like write, write, writes, her, writes her own stuff a and lot that's too. Good. No, and but what I'm more getting at is the, it is just it, like the fat Jew, everyone is pillorying, but no one pillories BuzzFeed for doing the same thing. Grace Bell was just the first fucking person that came up on Google. Sorry, Grace. But seriously, though, what, like, they are, they, perhaps it's not evil, but there is a certain shittiness to this because it is just sure. They quote the tweet and that's great. It's great they do the attribution of sorts. But how many people are clicking through to these things? I'm going to go with zero. Well, okay, that's probably bullshit. But, like, I'm not... Having been featured in one of these articles, I think I got maybe 30 retweets, which is fine, and I wasn't looking for retweets, and that's not really the inherent problem. It's just, like... Well, you were, like, when you... When they clicked through to your profile, you were, like... You were doing, like, uh, your Thursday racist rant, <laughs> which is kind of a tradition on your page until 2015. Racist Thursdays. And they are like, oh, I don't think I'll retweet this guy. No. No, racist Thursdays. Come back. <laughs> Come back for I'm Sorry Friday, though. <laughs> but, but what's really funny, actually, and it's, I don't want to pillory Grace here, because like you said, she's a good human being and all that, but she actually, she did this 17 hilarious tweets about you before and after the Olympics, and you get down, and you're like scrolling through them, boring, boring, boring. 11, and it's one of her tweets. I kind of like that. That is brazen in the new way. It's just like, ah, fuck it. I'll put one of my own in. Fuck y'all. I mean, I think that's more that's honest, hilarious. Though. Like, that I it's like, like that. it's like she wrote, like she she basically like wrote the article because like her own tweets are in there. 
I don't like, I don't know. I think like the entire business model of the internet is fucking repulsive. Like, and I like, I try to like think that I'm high minded sometimes because like I, I write about things that I think are interesting, but okay. What is, what's like allowing me to do that? It's that 1% of people who click on the article will click on a fucking instantly generated ad about dick pills that don't work or fucking flashlight or some other or a pyramid scheme preying on the least the people in our society who have the least amount of guile and wits about them to buy these shitty products that advertise online that's the only thing keeping this whole thing running it's the only reason that's probably where like like half my income comes from like the whole inner the whole way that we do this is fucking repulsive and at the end of the day, I can't really get mad at any about how anyone really makes their money online if they're not like killing somebody or fucking selling upskirt shots or whatever. So my business. Yeah, I mean the the, the way I kind of see that shit is like it's like getting mad at somebody picking through your recycle to get the cans out that you didn't bother to return. Yeah, it's like, yeah, kind of. There's yeah. a couple of cents to be made off your shit, then fucking let them make it. But I think it's You're obviously it's, not doing it. It speaks to a weird cultural thing that we we're so insane about plagiarism, but we accept the content aggregation form of con- uh, model of business. Yeah. What I've noticed is that I saw so the Melania Trump speech, right? Melania Trump does the same speech that every first lady has done since it became a crime to kill a poor person <laughs> in like 1890. <laughs> in in <And> 1982. <laughs> 1982, Reagan fought it, but they got it's it like through. It's like 2006, actually, that they, uh, they outlawed that. <laughs> and again, I campaigned against it. the fucking them. Dems took back Congress. <laughs> uh. Anyway, where are we going? <laughs> yeah, so it's like just the same bullshit speech that every, like, you know, wife and Yeah, it's mo- like, you know they fucking told her she had to make the speech, and she was like, oh, well, what what do the other ones say? I'm just going to say yeah, that. Yeah, exactly. It's like, that's what you fucking well, do. What the, yeah, I, it's the job. Yeah, keep going. So I, I saw these journalists called the biggest story of the year, <laughs> and this was... This was like two weeks <laughs> after a series of car bombs that killed hundreds in Baghdad... Uh, you know, since then there's been the coup attempt in Turkey. So their point there's, still stands. Their point still <laughs> yeah. stands. There's been like even that night. That wasn't the grossest thing that happened that night. Like Rudy Giuliani went on stage and did like the it was like Hitler at Munich in 1936. It was just fucking sheer disgusting racialized terror and demagoguery. But because. We, it's been beat into our heads that plagiarism is the worst thing you can do because it is a professional crime. And we live in sort of this antiseptic, neutered office culture. Plagiarism is the worst thing. I don't even think it's the worst fucking thing you can do in journalism. You get drummed out of journalism if you plagiarize a story yeah. or plagiarize something, unless you're Benny Johnson. But... You could, like, fucking kill a journalist. That might be worse. I don't know. I think, like, it depends what kind. Yeah, but, which uh, journalist are you killing? They'd let you kill a sports writer. <laughs> what, just in general? Or? <laughs> yeah, generally, they'd be like, hey, they, that's why pencils come with erasers. But, uh... <laughs> that's uh, twisted. Fucking... Yeah, oh, yeah. Uh, looks like a little movie changed me over the past week. But, uh... Okay... The New York Times op-ed board like wrote that we should invade Iraq based on the evidence that we had that turned out to be false, and like it turns out that like a lot of people who said they were fooled actually like knew that the yellow cake uranium story was bullshit. That it was all bullshit, but they were they were afraid of public opinion. They wanted to go along. They had such trust in elites immediately after nine eleven. And I consider that a greater crime. Yeah. The, the the press routinely fucks up on gross moral bounds all the time, all the time. I see disgusting things in respected newspapers all the time. I see like Nawaf Obaid, who's the PR guy for the Saudi, for Saudi intelligence, just get to write these disgusting op-eds where through barely veiled language, he's saying that we should kill every Shia. I see like 
today I saw this clip of this former CIA head go on Charlie Rose and say that we need to start killing every Russian and Iranian in Syria for revenge, as he said. I just see these revolting views put forth all the time and the media completely co-opt them and be like, endorse them by not saying anything or even take the, take up the mantle themselves. Yeah. And just no one gets punished. No one has been punished for being wrong about Iraq or being wrong about any litany of things. But I hope they don't fucking start punishing people for being wrong because I'm in for a Yeah, me too. I'm, I'm, I mean, me too. Like, I'm not proud of the predictions I've made generally. No, but I see your point. It's, it's this kind of – there are, there are lesser examples that are still very clear where basically – People have been damaged and potentially killed. I mean, Theranos is the one we've joked about, joked about the sponsorships and such, which are very real and still haven't come through. But Theranos is a great example of where the media did not do their due diligence, partly because they were manipulated, but still they were manipulated into hyping a company that said they could do these blood tests, blood tests would be correct and they'd be non-invasive, they'd be this little prick in your finger and whatever. And now tens of thousands of these, and we still don't know the outcome of this, tens of thousands of these reports are now, uh, of these tests, got invalidated. Someone's going to be dead. Now that is a fucking horror show. That is something where journalists should be running retractions fucking retroactively. They should be deleting the articles they wrote, or at least basically big, big letters saying like, this is all bullshit now, but they're still up. And sure, the, the Google News results for Theranos still are obviously, like, horrifying for Theranos. But still, people got taken along for a ride. And people went into fucking Walgreens in California, in Arizona, and took tests that affect, affected them in a genuine way. And yet there are articles going out there saying, Lessons of Theranos. Fact-checking alone isn't enough. What? What? They, just what? Like... What? Why is that? Like, that is worse than someone copy-pasting a tweet, for sure. That is just straight up saying that's covering up someone's definite criminal actions. As a journalist, you should have... It's not even integrity. It's just fucking responsibility to the people reading. Sure, if you got fooled, that's one thing. But you should be saying, ah, fuck, all of these articles to do with Theranos are junk. We were fooled. Like, that would at least be... Something approaching a reasonable response like a human. But fuck, no, just we need to pillory, I don't know, Millennia Trump, because really, and and they'd love to pretend like it was, oh yeah, we're doing it because, you know, she's a bad person for doing the thing, when they're just doing it because she's fucking Trump's wife and they want any fucking dirt they can on Trump because Trump's a bad person. And you know what? Just, just fine. It, like, the, vap- the vapidity of that speech was just... As vapid as every other fucking speech in every other fucking political arena. Sure, occasionally one comes along that's a, that's original and interesting, but most of them just fucking repeat the same banal platitudes. Ugh, it just it it angers me. Now you've got me mad. I I think the Theranos thing is a terrific example because that like I don't think for a second any of these journalists like. I mean, I think more of the blame should go on their editors. Yeah. But these editors looking at these pieces or having these pieces essentially sold to them by Theranos people, they didn't think for a second, like, oh, this sounds like we're doing a fucking press release for this company. And that's bad enough if the company wasn't completely fraudulent, which it was. But this undoubtedly got people killed. But there are no one at any media organization... I would be fucking shocked if anyone at the senior editor position or hired, higher gets fired or even gets mentioned in the wake of this yeah. like they would during a plagiarism scandal. Oh, no. I mean, th- with the Benny Johnson thing, that was on every fucking blog remotely related to journalism. And the the, the fat Jew was all over. It's like, oh, the fuck Jerry stole this tweet from Dildo Man 69 and he's a bad person because he photographed it and put it on 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 his uh, Instagram. Like when Johnny Sum had his tweet, you mentioned this before, and like everyone was banding around like it was fucking nine eleven two. It was like fucking hell. You stole a Johnny Sum tweet, which was already someone's picture that he stole, which I thought was quite funny. But 
And it's like, that's what makes you upset? Like, black people just shot by police all the time. You're like, nah, well, think of the real issues, fellas. Well, I think, okay, so, uh, fucking, uh, um, the Benny Johnson thing was big. Yeah. And, like, I still talk about it because it's funny because Benny Johnson's an asshole. Yeah. And he just, like, says and does, like, racist, fucked up shit all the time. And, like, yeah, it's a political view that, like, probably all of us just find repugnant. And so, yeah, guilty as charged. It's, like, funny to shit on this guy when he fucked up. Yeah. At the same time, we probably should be talking about the media sources that uh, propagated Theranos' bullshit way more. But my question is, okay, we talk about things other than Benny Johnson, other than because it's just fun to shit on Benny Johnson. Why do you guys think that we consider plagiarism such a unique moral hazard when we really, when you look at it deeper, it just, it doesn't stack up to other bad things you can do. I think it's, it's because it's simpler and it's more of like a tackleable thing. Like you can write an article on why plagiarism is bad and really fucking sell it. And you'll know the solution is like, stop stealing shit. Stealing is bad. But if you tackle like a real complex issue, it's, you don't really know what to tell people because nobody fucking knows what to tell people. Like, plagiarism is real cut and dry, and I feel like that makes it a simpler thing to, like, attack in, like, a journalism article. Absolutely, and I think it, it's two things. One, you, you, Mike, you nailed it as well. It's something we drummed into us from kids, don't steal. But also, in high school, in college, we're told plagiarism's the worst. It's like, fuck it. Like, who gives a shit about the people that I know had sex with professors? I mean, that's bad, but eh, why investigate it? Plagiarism, they have fucking programs for it. They investigate that shit like the Stasi. And, yeah, when it comes... In England, you actually don't get, in my experience, as many plagiarism stories. But I think it's also this vaunted position of the journalist as this very special person who is of this great esteem. Which is why, by the way, blogs and BuzzFeed give such anxiety to these big media companies because they're like, well, they're not, they're not important like us. They... I think it's like the, a plagiarist, an act of plagiarism is some sort of grand attack on the beautiful world of journalism. Despite the fact that Gorka, well, usually like, they're like, ah, uh, yes, Mike.com, plagiarist of the day, Jared Keller. I like Jared. Jared's, Jared's an alright bloke. I don't know what he stole. I just, I literally went on Google, Google typed in Gorka plagiarism, and they have a whole fucking tag for it. And sure, you could do some arsehole thing of, like, comparing tags. I'm not going to do research. That's against my morals. But it's like, Jesus Christ. Who fucking cares if Mike plagiarized some... It's like... And it was an article about some bullshit. Who cares? But it's never, like... It's not, like, the, the basically shitty journalism being attacked. Which Gawker also does. I'll give him that. But not many other people do it. There's not... Like, when, um... William Alden from BuzzFeed, actually brilliant journalist, taken from the New York Times, did this huge piece on Zenefits. Uh, you don't need to know what they do. It's something to do with insurance. But basically, their whole thing that they did wrong was that they didn't get the required legal licenses. I didn't see a single fucking line attacking the breathless hype behind that company, which could have been investigated. Which could have been... And I don't... S- I do want to clarify two things... Uh, I get paid via Zenefits, and the name is supposed to be Benefits, but it's a Z instead of a B. Oh, my God, really? If people are confused. Yeah, no, that's what it's supposed to be. I just, someone just told me today. Shit. I thought, I thought they just made up a word. No, it's not, it's, a lot of people think that, but that's not it. It's a pre-existing, but they use a Z, and there are a lot of words that begin with Z, and you see that, and you're like, whoa, okay, this is a different that, look. That is something. But it's like... It's just, it's all of this stuff. There's very serious things that people don't pay that much attention to, but plagiarism, plagiarism's like fucking, it's it's just something where I think it's another part of this anxiety that the media has, that their content is that special. And sure, if you're like, I, I have talked about it way too much recently, but let's say the... The piece is like the Mother Jones article with the person who's a prison guard for four, four months. You can't really plagiarize that, but if someone's done a decent amount of research and it gets stolen, that's upsetting. That is re- that is shit. You should rip into that. But if it's some fucking statement from an article 
It's just some fucking thing that someone said that kind of sounds similar. And it's just... It's just, it, it, it's not that, it's not as bad as everyone makes it out to be. It's annoying, it's shitty for sure, but it's not, unless it's someone in a vaunted position, really just shittily stealing and making shit tons of money off of it, and keeping their life, their, the lights on with it, it's just not as big a deal, but society has made it into this grand fucking crime. I kind of think it's a... Uh... It's the culture thing. Yeah. I think that uh, – so today, uh, New York Times – I'm really excited about – I'm really excited about this. They have a new podcast. Oh, yeah. Michael Michael Barbaro. <laughs> Michael Barbaro is the guy who tweeted the picture of the homeless guy. Be still my like, beating erection. This and unacceptable. He rules. He's my favorite. And when they were like, New York Times has a new podcast. It's hosted by Michael Barbaro. And I was like, hell yeah. And I downloaded it because, like, all things Michael Barbaro, I'm there. And Newt Gingrich was on, and Newt Gingrich hates – you could tell he hated this shit out of Michael Barbaro. But, okay, anyway, I'm, I'm – I'm, look, I'm just – I'm talking about this experience that I enjoyed. Okay, but everyone on that podcast – like, I looked up everyone who was on the podcast with Barbaro and Barbaro himself – all of them like went to Harvard. They went to Yale. Like the the elite core of journalists, they have attended Ivy League schools, and they come from this culture of sort of bullshit academic achievement and uh, overachievement culture, where they think the entire world is like school. And that's my theory as to why they were so their attacks against Trump are so kind of limp. That Trump has more been undone by his own just sticking his foot in his mouth. You know, like he decide he goes decides to go after Kazir Khan for God knows why. Yeah, it's like pe- people point at Trump all the time. And they're like, "Oh, you're technically wrong about like that. Like that's something that matters to anyone." Right, because these people like he, he's technically wrong constantly. That's like his whole fucking yeah, shit. exactly. And that's why the media is powerless against him is because they come from this overachievement, like academic bullshit culture where the system does work for them. Like they, they did the they did good on the standardized test and they did good in school and someone they called somebody at fucking Harvard and then they they followed this path for the rest of their lives. And they think that somebody not playing by the rules should immediately disqualify them. That's why Jeb Bush just got incinerated by Trump because he's one of those guys. He was just like, I just have to play by the rules and they're going to punish Trump for saying he's going to fuck my wife or whatever. And it just it doesn't work like that out there. And it's going to work less and less because people are rejecting these values, not just on the right, but on the left, uh, because people's lives aren't getting demonstrably better under these values. But that's another thing. But I think that the plagiarism thing is an, ex- is an extension of that. It's this, this very academic idea that you can sell any viewpoint, whether it's, you know, we need to have endless war in this one country or it's okay that people die in factories. This is okay because you're arguing it from a dispassionate academic point of view. But to forge the work, to take a shortcut on the work, you are belittling the achievement. And this is, at the end of the day, only about achievement, only about institutional procedure more than any actual morality because that's the only world that these people really know. Yeah. And I think that and it and it's funny, I remember stupidly getting mad at the sadly pastor David Carr a while ago for writing this piece almost I wouldn't say it was almost identical. I remember having this stupid reaction at the time. I wrote about this site called The Wire Cutter. It's run by a former Gizmodo guy. Basically wrote this piece and then he wrote a very similar piece to it. To the point that I was like, hmm, okay. Then I realized, took a fucking step back, talked to a mate who was basically like, you're an idiot. Because it was just, there are times when people decry plagiarism when it's just similar idea done better, which is pretty much the foundation of all business and a great deal of society and, in fact, a great deal of humanity. And it's, people are this, it, it's it's an identity thing as well. It's like, I wrote the piece where I said that Trump is a bad man. You said it, and but I said it first, and you should give the attribution to the thing. And it's like, not really. If, if it's commentary that's similar, fuck it. And you know what? If it's a direct ripoff quarrel, don't be a dick. Just don't. But it's not this, it's not this grand thing, unless it is something of real note. And 
it's just it, this hand wringing. I've done it. I'm fucking guilty of it. Over like tweet tweets being stolen is just. And I'm that dickhead who's like finds the original tweets. Like, hey, nice joke. Where'd you get it? But that's as far as I'll go. I'm not gonna pillory people for it. But it's like. It's incredible how serious it gets. You've reminded me of the, these people who will treat it like this incredible, terrible time. Was it Farid Zakaria? Who someone found, like, had stolen a bunch of shit? Yes. Yeah, that's, that's the guy. And it's like, that is serious. That's a major journalist stealing a lot of shit. Nah, people just left that one alone. But the fat fucking dupe, man. Get me the police. Yeah, I don't know. It's, it's weird for me. It's like... Every couple of weeks or so, like, somebody, like, my sister has done this in real life, or people have, like, direct messaged me on Twitter saying, like, oh, like, your joke about, like, the hot dog on the ground, that's on Tumblr, and it's got, like, fucking 80,000 notes or whatever, and it's like, I'm pretty sure most of the people who have ever read my tweets have read them on Tumblr. Like, that That's more than I've ever seen on, like, an actual tweet of mine. But it's, I, I don't really mind at all, I just, I, it's cool that the jokes are getting out there. I'm glad it's making people and laugh. And Carlos Mencia as well has stolen a fuck ton of jokes. And that one, I don't know, there, there is some degree of, there is some degree of validity to some of it. Like the various, like, for example, Dane Cook stole a bunch of jokes. But even then it's like, is it really that, is it really that big a deal? It's, the, it's not like people are like, okay, I've heard Dane Cook say a joke. Cool. Got it. But wait, another guy saw, said the same joke. Uh, I'm never seeing that other guy. Oh, I can't believe those guys laughed at you instead of laughing at me. They were That was my thing that they should, should have been laughing at. I don't know, like, who fucking cares? They do. And I love the ones who are like... Yeah, I mean, some people do care, obviously. I, just, I, don't know <laughs> I, know, I didn't mean that sarcastically. It's just like... it's. <laughs> yeah, no, you're right, though. I mean, they but do they care. Care. Like, literally them. And, like, maybe a group of... Of, of very sad cray people do but it's like you know it's a shitty thing to do and by all means make a tweet be like ah fuck you Dane Cook for stealing the thing but past that point it's like oh come on lads uh, you, you really that is it really that it's not like someone's choosing Dane Cook over Louis CK and he and saying okay well Dane Cook has the funnier jokes and specifically keying in on the one he stole or Carlos Bencia it's just this really weird societal hand wringing over the idea that you have stolen this and there was even this another his his actual valid plagiarism this is one where people should have been more upset than they were so zara clothing big clothing store basically stole the designs of a bunch of shit from internet people and then sold it Basically, literally sold it for money. That's pretty fucking bad. That's horrible. That is, like, a good thing to get mad at. That is something where people should be fucking furious. But, no, not really, no. There were there were stories about it, and the story's maybe going to die out, maybe it won't. But that's horrible. And people aren't... Look, more people are angry that the potential second lady, Melania Trump, might maybe have got in and... Take, maybe taking a thing from fucking Michelle Obama. It's like, I mean, I guess. Yeah, it's like, well, first of all, she didn't take shit. She didn't write the speech. Some other guy took a thing from another speechwriter. And, like, she was already using someone else's words. Which to, happens like, all the time in politics. Convey a message that she didn't care and about. And business. Like, people technically plagiarize all the time because they have someone else write it. It's called, or just lying. Juicy word. I, uh,. My favorite analysis of the Millennium Trump thing, because I also think it's it's really funny, but I also think it's kind of true, is what Andrew Andrew said, uh, where he goes, uh, he's just imagining all these sweaty journalists is masturbating to the idea of scolding millennia. Yeah, yeah and it gets... They're, they're just like all like, like a morning money... Fucking Cafferty is like, uh, it's, you did bad, bad <laughs> you did bad, Mr. Mrs. Trump. I'm gonna have to punish you. We, I learned about plagiarism when I went to Vanderbilt. <laughs> you did bad. Looks like you have to wring your socks into my mouth. <laughs> you have to use me as a footstool, madame. 
<laughs> well, you officially, you. Well, I'll never have sex again, nor have I had it before. This is the least appealing thing you can think <laughs> yeah. of is the journalists like getting like demanding Melania Trump like shove her feet in their faces because of plagiarism. It is the ultimate sweetieing. It's like the the king of the sweeties. I do. I unironically do think that. No, though, that's the, that there is are, a that, definite yeah. horniness on a slight tangent. There is a horniness to the coverage of Melania Trump, like the whole model thing. It actually got kind of crass recently as well with the immigration. But notice that everyone's like, oh yeah, um, uh, uh, Melania Trump, she, uh, she uh, took these model photos. I've got to look at all of them. And we've got to post all of them because it's journalism. And it won't be journalism without having the full evidence. <laughs> Boy, uh. this is This is a weird aside, but uh, do you ever get the sense that like... People are kind of like they're excited to be like shitty to women yes. when it's like to Melania Trump. They're just sort of getting it all out there. There's this Republican guy who I fucking hate. His name is Rick Wilson, and he's just another one of these fucking morons who work for like Romney or McCain or any number of losing Republican presidential tickets. But you know, he gets to go in real time with Bill Maher and Cy. Well, Bill Maher like talks about how he wants to blow up every Muslim. Uh, but he's like liberals like him now because he hates Trump. But really, like the fact that he hates Trump makes me like Trump because like Trump just showed that this guy's worthless. Yeah. Like the, Trump beat this guy. I don't know why this guy is smug about Trump because like Trump destroyed fifteen people that this guy would have pit up against them. He fucking humili- humiliated them. I don't know why this guy gets to be smug about it. But anyway, anyway, anyway. Uh, when like people were saying like Trump's dangerous Donald is poor, that's why he's like not releasing his tax returns. He, this guy said, yeah, uh, Trump is so poor that uh, his next wife is going to be from Mexico. <sighs> that and is fucking I, yeah, gross. I just saw like a, a bunch of jokes like that that are about Melania Trump. That's like, yeah, he got this cheap whore from one of those Borat countries. <laughs> Uh, from these people who are like, I'm gonna amplify women all day, and it's like, no, you're still like, it's still like a really fucked up thing to say about a woman or a person at all, like any person. I mean, uh, you just like you, you're excited to get it out that you finally have an acceptable angle to get it out. That has nothing to do with the theme of the podcast. Oh, no. Just oh, no, no, no. I kind of but noticed. it's Jermaine something I was reading earlier from my favorite Vanity Fair columnist Nick Bilton. So I read this obtuse piece, and this is going to be my shit of the week, despite it being from June. It's my dinner with Peter Thiel. So already it's the Thiel, sorry. And already it's this fucking masturbatory thing of him basically humble bragging that he was important enough. And he was just mostly complaining about the snacks. I'm not kidding, because the meal wasn't big enough. Like, there wasn't really a meal. It was just, like, sushi. And weirdly, he keeps coming back to now Yahoo CEO, but probably not for long, Uh, Marissa Mayer, who was at the time working very high up at Google, as he says, but his wording is really creepy. It's like he was, like, excited a bit to get this chance to just, like, yeah, give her the business. (laughs) And... He, he And he was using these weird words. He said, like, ah, she fingered a couple of pieces of sushi before scampering into the other room. And everyone else he describes with this kind of grandiose language. And there he is, just fucking, just like every description of Marissa Mayer is this, this like, tiny lady who's just like, oh, no, the, pro- the man is here. I cannot be seen eating this sushi. Ooh. And it's really weird as well because he also compares Peter Thiel to, like, Joffrey from Game of Thrones, so you know it's the good ship. Hell yeah, win. <laughs> but, win. Right, I'm just going to read this because this, this getting into this, this really is important. At the top of the circle, Thiel sat, drinking a glass of champagne like King Joffrey on the Iron Throne. That is, if the Iron Throne were a lazy boy. So I'm not really going to go into detail on this article. I just want to state that this guy's definition of, like, opulence is drinking champagne on a lazy boy and, like, looking down at woman. I, 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 I just loved it. I, I, I won't read any more of the article because it's so fucking terrible. I just 
can't stand it, but that was just, there is this weird thing where there are, it's, and you get all these people, people who will pick out like one word from an article and say, sexist dude, but like that's, and the stuff you're describing as well, that's where the weird sexism comes into the media. That's where you really see it. The ones who are like, they're like, oh, I must discipline this woman. <laughs> Bring her down a few pegs. <laughs> Finally get mine. It's just weird, man. Don't even know where I'm going with it. I'm just so upset. It sounds like a hell of an article. It, it, it's it's killer. I, it's the only shit of the week I actually can't bring myself to read again because it's it's actually insufferable. It is very funny, though, listening to him complain about food and justify himself not being rich because I guess he doesn't have a lazy boy. Anyway, but back to plagiarism. Like As he opulently drank Franzia in his recliner, she... Chittered and scurried into a small hole in the wall where she made her <laughs> which, home. Which, as, as deserved. <laughs> oh, God. All right, let's bring it back to plagiarism, guys. I'm going to kill myself if I think this article again. Um, so, yeah, uh, it seems like we just roundly don't give much of a shit about <laughs> no, plagiarism. Plagiarism stupid. Everyone should do it. I like it. We like plagiarism. <laughs> yeah, I'm thinking of like stealing a couple of jokes later. Yeah, I, do you guys want to steal some intellectual property? <laughs> why, why not? But it, it is this... I want to do my shit of the week, though. I'm thinking I'm going to like... I'm going to tweet a lot of the jokes from this podcast before it's ah, like released. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. And then I'll accuse hell yeah. you guys of stealing them, even though it's like pretty obvious that you said them and I was there. I'm going to read I'm going to post everything on your fave star from my account. Actually the next episode of the, the podcast is going to be Felix reading your fave star. That's that's perfectly fine. And then the episode after that is we're just going to play record me playing the last episode of Chapo <laughs> through my phone. And I'll be like no this is the new episode of Scumbag. <laughs> this is a new Incorrect. Thing. Incorrect uh, Felix. I'm going to listen to an episode of Scumbag. Uh, sorry, not Scumbag Chapo. Write it all down and then read out every voice. I'll be Will, I'll be you, I'll be Matt. <laughs> It'd be fantastic. I think that's a good idea. Uh, <laughs> all right, your shit of the week, though. Did you guys know that they cut hours of Joker scenes from Suicide Squad? These, I just found that shit Wait, out today, what? and it fucking ruined my day. Yeah. This, please tell us what they cut. Uh, well, they cut a lot of stuff. <laughs> They, uh... It was a scene where the Joker, like, he, he took a bite of an orange without peeling Whoa. it. Yeah, definitely. Just crazy shit. And they're... My thinking he, like, is... ate some peanuts with a shell on. <laughs> yeah, no, he yeah. ate pistachios. He chugged an entire, like, glass of ice water, like, including yeah, the Yeah, he ate pistachios without opening them. That's twisted. Yeah, they said it was probably, like, too twisted. Probably, like, in the... They're like, whoa, this is an election year. Uh, if we release this now, like, people are going to write in the Joker. And no one gets to be president, except for Jared Leto. Uh, so they probably took it out for that reason. But I, th- I think that's fucked up, because the reason that I was excited to see the Suicide Squad, and I imagine millions of other Americans were as well, was to see the Joker. And he was literally only in there for eight minutes. And it's not like they cut the movie to make it short. It was already, like, two and a half fucking hours. Give me 30 oh, extra minutes serious? of the fucking Joker. I'm seeing that movie tonight. I can't believe it's two and a half hours. It's so long, Mike. It's so long. And there's only like eight minutes of the Joker. And that's fucking bullshit. Give me that Joker content. Give me that fucking Joker shit right now. Show me the Joker. That's what I paid for. That's what everyone paid for. Literally everyone paid for because the entire marketing campaign was about how badass the Joker is. And we barely got to see him. And it's... That's bullshit. That's bullshit. How are you going to walk away with a two and a half hour movie and you're like, oh, we have to cut it for length? No, it's not a 90 minute movie that you have to make like punchy. You made a long movie with like barely any Joker. That's fucked up. I can't even make a joke about it. Well, I I have not seen this movie, and I think it's fair to now that we've. We fixed plagiarism. I think we can all agree. We're done with it. No one's going to care about it and ever again. And no one's going to plagiarize this. ever again as a result. So we've cleaned this up. But I think let's dedicate the rest of the podcast to the Suicide Squad. So I haven't seen it yet, and neither is Mike, so we're perfect to talk about it. But I don't fucking get how you make a movie like that bad. I actually don't understand. You've got what sounds like a pretty competent Joker. 
You've got a, no, no. He isn't. He was he's terrible. fucking awful. Oh, I couldn't. Oh, Jared Leto, like I wouldn't fucking trust him to act at all, ever in any situation, much less playing like, you know, a character that's supposed to be like an interesting star of the movie. Like that they probably had to cut the shit because he sucked. I saw Suicide Squad with Will Meneker, and I like physically couldn't look at Will during all the Joker scenes because we were both laughing too hard. Well, my thing is, all right, let's take a step. But give me more of that shit. Take a step back, though. So he sucks. He's bad. You know why he's probably bad? I'm gonna, I'm gonna, in a rare moment of generosity, defend Jared Leto here and say it's probably bad direction. He, he was born with like a quarter yeah. of a brain. <laughs> he's it's a really dolphin not brain. He's, he's, he actually has the disease from Memento. He has to be reminded of lines <laughs> constantly. <laughs> yeah, like you're really crazy, Jared. No, but seriously, how'd you fuck up this movie? You have Will Smith, Dark Lord of the Sith. You have Jared Leto being the Joker. Just have him be like Jack Nicholson in the first Batman. Just have him be like, Mah, I'm the Joker. Mah. And oh, Batman Returns style. Like, look at the Penguin. Look at how great Batman Returns was. Where it's just like, Christopher Walken's like, Bruce, why are you dressed up like Batman? Why not have the entire movie be like 98 minutes of just them versus the Joker? And I tweeted this as well. All right, so... They have this grand plot about some bullshit I don't care about, and I definitely won't care about while I watch it. It should have just been, all right, we're preparing them to fight this theoretical situation when Superman rips the roof off the White House, where they'd still get their asses beat because it's fucking Superman. So you've got this incompetent bunch of fuckwits prepared to fight supernatural forces, and they end up having to go up against a dickhead dressed as a clown and his bunch of fuckwits. And that would be a funny movie, just make it like boring blitz just on repeat, just punching them in the face. But no, they have to go for this wanky... And it, it does play into what we talk about on Scumbag, though. Because it's this idea that everything has to be fucking important and special, a high, high intellect. And they're trying to do this with a movie where, like, one of the main characters is a former psychologist who got, who got made horny by a P, PUA dude. You know, that's real shit, though. That's real shit. That happens to women every day when you, like... Are at their job and you like you're doing PUA shit and you're saying like cool shit like the Joker says like okay uh, I don't know how many listeners of the show go to a psychologist but if your psychologist you think you can make your psychologist fall in love with them say something the Joker would say to your psychologist and just watch they're gonna fall in love with yeah, you and do cool knife tricks as well but it's but yeah knife- exactly I, I, it's just like. I don't really understand what went wrong and why. I, I mean, I do totally understand. Basically, DC watched all the all of the films that Marvel made lots of money from and went, "Huh, they all seem like kind of fun, really enjoyable movies." Not trying to be too serious about themselves. Let's make really fucking serious dark movies about really stupid shit. Got it? Great. Ship it. And I just I can't wait to watch this film just fucking drunk. I mean, like, really, like, messy. Like, I'm... You gotta drink some bourbon. Well, I, I know there's there's a line from the movie where... Or at least it was in the trailer. It was like, I'm not gonna kill you. I'm gonna hurt you really bad from the Joker. I think that was the line. Yes. Which is yes. one of the worst fucking lines ever. It's like, I'm not gonna kill you. I'm gonna hurt you. You don't think that's good? You. Yeah, it's good. It's like, it's like most villains would be like, I'm gonna kill you. But the Joker's like, no, I'm not most villains. I think that's good. It's called establishing his character. <laughs> I just, I, I love it. It's something you don't know about. Oh, you thought I was going to kill you. Too bad. Oh, I'm, hell I yeah. I wish I'd kill you hell after yeah. I hurt you with my Joker knife. And he's not even, well, tell me, Felix, in the eight, eight or nine seconds he's actually in the movie, does he, it's even have joker shit like the joker always had like funny joker to like what's yeah. his best does joke? he tell one uh his, his best his the best joke is um okay so like they're on an airplane or something or the fucking helicopter i think yeah they're on a helicopter and like these guys uh the, the guys on the helicopter die as they get blown up by an anti-aircraft gun and joker says something like uh Looks like we're taking a shortcut. <laughs> nah, I'm like, hell yeah, bitch. Hell that's not yeah. a joke, though. I mean, he doesn't... That is a joke. That is a joke. That is a joke. Like, that's... What yeah, would it's you not say? really like a shortcut. It's like the helicopter's... Like, it's gonna crash. Like, that's not... I mean, technically, it is a short yeah, one. Yeah, it's a joke. That's what makes it a joke. 
Would you guys say that if your helicopter got hit with anti-air yes. guns? Of course I would. I think I probably would. I'd be like, looks like we're taking a shortcut. You're, no, you're full of shit. You wouldn't do that. I definitely wouldn't yell, oh, fuck. <laughs> no, that's that's the joke. That's like the kind of jokes the Joker is always told. Like he'll, like he, uh, he like cuts a guy's head off, and he's like, looks like he could, looks like he doesn't uh, have that anymore. <laughs> yeah, I took his head off. <laughs> it basically, we're getting into that's Austin like, Powers. That's like the, uh, look, looks like you died from <laughs> killing you just there. Yeah, the Joker. Yeah, the Joker. Uh, when he lights a guy on fire, he's like, I need a light. <laughs> <laughs> Which doesn't even make sense. Because <laughs> he's crazy. He's, he's crazy. But, what, but on the subject of like the Joker, and a lot of the people writing about this, and I'm a, I'm a fucking horrible comic nerd, and I won't reveal too much of that, but it's like the one thing that the Joker consistently does, it's even in his name, is actually tell jokes. He does, t- like, even in Heath Ledger's one, he tells a joke. Even in fucking, like, in, the, in one of the thing, one of the, I mean, that's like, that's kind of what's so twisted about this Joker. He's like, he comes in and he's like, oh, you, you probably think something that's funny is like if I were to open a can and like a foam snake came out, but that's not funny to me. I like, I like bullets and shit. I'm serious now. That's like the truest well, what joke. What I think is funny is being really serious. Yeah. Well, I don't think Heath Ledger like told jokes either. Like he didn't. He, yeah, I think that's the, like the, 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 the we, we think that we think that Joker was good because 9-11 ruined our brains. And uh, we were like, he represents uh, Al Qaeda, and so like we thought it was really good. When really like go back, go back and watch that movie. All of Heath Ledger's scenes, he's like, sometimes when you have rules, you have to break them. No, he's just like licking his lips and talking weird, really high. Well, he's he's like, oh, what all are you gonna do a crime? I. Why so serious? Yeah, yeah. When he goes to the, he goes to the party, he doesn't even accomplish anything. He just goes there to freak out all the rich squares. They're like, when, when, when that fucking when Patrick Leahy, who's a senator in real life, is like, we're not afraid of you, Joker. And the Joker's like, I'm gonna kill ya. <laughs> it's like, That's no, the Joker joke. sucks. The Joker sucks. The only good Joker was uh, Jack Nicholson because he was horny as hell. Yeah, well, and, and that still was cool. is horny as hell. Like that's still d- horny as hell. I actually, I disagree with that Joker. I don't know how we turned this into a film podcast, but you know what? I love it. It's, it's a Joker, Joker podcast. podcast. It's twisted. But I actually didn't mind that Joker. I didn't think it was like the best thing ever. Like seemingly everyone. Uh, he just he basically did fucking Tommy Lee Jones from the Val Kilmer one. Yeah. He like did that performance too. And he was scary because he was just fucking. Killing people and like slamming pens in their fucking head. That was the, it, it was it was he was. I remember someone. The yeah, when you watch that, it's like, oh, hope he doesn't slam a pen into my head. Yeah, that's what you were thinking. I wasn't afraid. I was like, if the Joker did that to me, I would immediately establish distance and get risk control. Yeah. Oh yeah, dude. Like any friend who kills you by slamming your head onto a pencil is like, that's not a friend. You get out of here, bitch. Hell no. That's an abusive Hell no. relationship. Not acceptable. You no. tell a tell a tell a policeman. If you see that happening, and it's all about risk yeah, control, risk get immediate risk control, of course, but then call the policeman and get help. But my favorite moment of that movie when people try and tell me like, "Oh, it's so realistic, it was so gritty," is when the Joker is in some big van and Batman's in his back car, and it's like he pulls out a machine gun, he's shooting him, he pulls out like a bigger machine gun, and he just pulls out a fucking bazooka. He's like, "Where did he get that? He didn't have any money." Yeah, he did. Yeah, he did. He, he, said, he, oh, he, um, he robbed the yeah, bank. He robbed the, he and robbed then the set bank. fire to the fucking money. Only half That's, of it. But still, it's like, like it's just, it's just this guy who was quasi frightening to whoever. Yeah, it's like, what is he crazy or something? And then he just blows up that hospital because, and their justification is, ah, uh, sometimes people just want to watch the world burn, and that is such a line, like, get that is purpose built for fucking idiots to quote. Like, uh, yeah, that's scary. Someone who just does things for re- no reason. And it's just like, no, he's just fucking... D- d- and it's vaguely connected. Like, oh, he was probably just joking. <laughs> I want to blow up the hospital. Bang. Get it? It's like, fuck. That would... Actually... You know what you know, you know, you know would be cool? Uh, if they redid The Dark Knight and the Joker tried to do his shit. And instead of Batman, who's a bitch, basically... Uh, can't get over his parents dying. Get over it. Uh, 
he went up against special forces operators and they just they would have murked the Joker. There's no movie. Like ten minutes they would just murk the Joker. I I, I still like the all of this, much like everything in the show, Arrow could be solved by the Flash. It's just like ah, I'm gonna do put a smart but he's fast and he picks him up and he puts him in the jail cell. Yeah, the, the Flash would have kicked would, the shit he, out of the Joker. Kick the shit. Would have just picked him up and like dropped him in the ocean. Yeah, yeah you're going to you're going to prison, buddy. Uh, but most of the guys in the DC universe could actually beat Joker. It's sort of a testament to how much Batman sucks. Yeah. Because Joe Joker's like, I'm gonna come to your party and be weird, and Batman's like, Oh no, I don't know. Oh, oh wow, how do I plan for well, this? Do you know how they? Who you think would win in like a fight between Batman and Superman though? Superman, easy. I, it's so easy. I think we all would win because it would be just such an enjoyable fight to watch. It was a great movie. I saw that movie. It was a great movie. One of the funniest moments in that movie, though, my favorite, actually, in recent movie history, I actually laughed harder than I have at a comedy in years, was when Doomsday turns up and Batman's, like, in his wrecked car. He just looks up and goes, ah, shit. Like like you would if you fucking forgot your keys or you forgot to do an errand. I loved it. But Batman, in in Batman versus Superman, Batman is, like, killing people with guns. What? So it's like that Batman would immediately have just like fucking put a bullet in Joker's yeah. forehead, right? Yeah, just immediately would have shot him in the head. But I still like that his reaction to his imminent death by like a nuclear beast is like, ah, oh, fuck it, ah, oh, shit it, motherfucker, ah, oh, this sucks. Ah, oh, oops, oopsie, oopsie. <laughs> shucks. Oh god, you're gonna see the Suicide Squad tonight as well. I'm so sorry. Yeah. Unfortunately, I don't know what I got myself into. You know what? I'm not particularly well, looking forward to it. It's going to be good. It's not going to be good. And <laughs> no, I think well, a good point to wrap it on, though, which gets back to maybe, if not plagiarism, it gets back to this whole self-importance thing, which I think maybe is a good theme for this podcast, all in all, is Twitter moments. I'm not sure if you've actually made the mistake of clicking it any time recently, but, like, there's this weird thing that has started to happen where my feed and it's this fucking election cycle but i feel like and you destroyed me mike with a horrible tweet of would you say you're just so serious or too so serious or like that was brutal i'm still suffering from that by the way but everyone really is it's like suddenly all humor and joy has been drained out of everything that everything has to be make a point you can't joke, like, no jokes today is a theme we've discussed before, but it really is fucking incredible. Just, just like, every, th- like every third thing is like, well, to, just a reminder, Trump is a racist. Millennia Trump. Yeah, I, I really try and stay out of that shit as much as possible. If I ever post anything that isn't stupid, I feel, like, immediately ashamed. I'm like, oh, I don't want to, like, put my real thoughts on here. I want to just fucking say stupid shit. Hell no, hell no, I don't, I don't agree with that. Oh no no! I'm just, it's it's fun for whoever. I else, think we have a, like we have a moral stupid. duty to put Donald Trump in line break jokes. <laughs> we gotta get him. Yeah, we gotta get you him. You know what? Yeah. Actually, it's there over. is a way of wrapping this back to plagiarism, which is people make these fucking generic points. They make these things up. Like, Trump's a bad man. You need to show the YouTube of the bad man saying the bad things to every Trump supporter you know. But really, that's it's this idea that everything you say is this big fucking deal on Twitter or on Facebook or on a blog. And it's, it's like, so your joke that you made, they're holding that up there with the five star people. They're holding it up, five star every say it. They're holding it up there with like the, the greatest comedians of all time. They, hold, they, they are like, I don't know who you'd consider an amazing comedian, but they're holding it up like, like they they are the new Three Stooges. Hardly like the highest level comedy, but like that that level of cultural importance. And yet, when someone steals it, that's like stealing. You're just copying. You're just a plagiarist. It's terrible. Same thing for people stealing tweets about fucking. I don't know. I made a point about Trump, and you steal it. I remember, and actually, the lamest plagiarism of all time: Dana Schwartz, amazing amazing thing because the moment I told her it took six seconds to get deleted I was fucking with my laptop I installed Windows on it and I somehow wiped my Mac while installing Windows on it in a moment of incredible idiocy and she took that took the picture posted it and then was like 
describe yourself in these words and it was the uh, describe yourself on a first day and it was like the windows thing saying lots of great features it was like the lamest act of plagiarism ever and when i i didn't even call her out i said why did you do this i don't get it and it deleted in six seconds it was incredible and i think that that's it people are just so desperate not just for in t- for for like attention but they want to seem like they're just clever they're just clever people doing clever things being clever out there on twitter be it whether you're plagiarizing an article be it on twitter or on your blog be it plagiarizing an article or news or whatever it's just some attempt to seem intelligent now that there's this big fucking megaphone for everyone i also think it's absolutely that and there's too much of a grind to just come Keep putting shit out there because they're the model that the, you make money off of on the internet that allows all this to keep in motion is dangerously unstable and demands constant feeding and encourages you to just put things out there without looking back at them. Uh, with that note, I have some great articles coming oh, yeah. up. Tell us. Yeah. Okay. So I got um, Donald Trump is the white walkers from game of thrones that's coming out in the guardian wow i've got uh i've got um 38 tweets uh the char kids know this election better than us and that's coming out in El monitor the El monitor saudi arabia subsection <laughs> and i've got i've got uh watch this child reject racism and that's coming out in the Mossad review in Israel, in print, in print, in print. I'm just describing the video in print. It's not on the website. It's just going in yeah, the Mossad I've trade newspaper. Got a piece coming out that I did where it's like that. There's a child and there's a rock, and one of them has a SpongeBob sticker, and then the other one has a sticker that says Donald Trump. And the kid, he goes for the SpongeBob. Holy bubble. shit! Yeah, yeah. So he, yeah he's only like four, but he knows like Trump is no good. He's like, give me SpongeBob instead. Jesus Christ. I mean, this, oh, hell yeah. not to spoil it, but like, this is pretty all good. pretty good. But I'm gonna, I'm actually gonna end the podcast on this because you're not gonna beat this. So I actually managed to get an esteemed placement on the front page of Monsanto's newsletter with my piece, Sharknado. Ed, congratulations! Thank you. But the piece is what's important. How Sharknado: The Fourth Awakens will end Trump's chances at becoming president. Hell yeah. We're, guys, we're doing it. A year ago, we said we were going to take over the media, and no one believed us. They were like, no, the globalists run the media. You're not globalist. You didn't get a bar mitzvah like globalists get. They were like, no, we're just going to work hard. We're going to work hard, and now we're all doing it. We're all doing it, and I'm really proud of us. God bless us, everyone. I've been Ed Zitron. I've been Felix Biederman. Hey, uh, I'm Mike Fossey. Thanks for having me, guys. Our pleasure. Thank you for being here, and thank you for listening to the the scumbag. And somehow I nearly forgot the name of the podcast there. Despite that, subscribe, download the fucking episodes. We need a new sponsor. We, I'm going bankrupt. Theranos is no longer. My marriage is over. There's no more Theranos. We need. We desperately need a new sponsor. No, I'm joking, of course. <laughs> Fuck. Anyway, thanks for listening, everyone. Bye. Peace. <laughs>